Today I'm going to try to answer five questions to give you a better sense of what is going on here at Goldshaw Farm. Over the past 30 days or so, our channel has had uh, just massive growth here on YouTube. Um, we've more than doubled in size. There's all sorts of new folks watching our videos. I am so super appreciative of all of you guys who have subscribed and decided to follow along with us as we try to build a farm here in Northern Vermont. But I also recognize that a lot of our videos might leave you with a bunch of questions. So what I was gonna do today is try to answer five questions for you guys that will help you better understand what we have going here on the farm, know a little bit more about us, and uh, make your entire viewing uh, experience that much more interesting. Question number one, what's your deal? So what is our deal? Well, Goldshaw Farm is a tiny little farm startup in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. It consists of myself, Morgan, my wife, Allison, our barn cats, Pablo and Lil, this gigantic old falling down barn, a whole bunch of pasture and woods, some baby trees, a flock of egg laying ducks, and uh, yeah, that's about it for right now. Uh, we are just trying to start a farm. Uh, we are in the earliest phases. We are only occasionally selling farm products, um, but our vision is to someday have a sustainable farm, one that's sustainable economically, one that's sustainable environmentally, and one that's sustainable for us and our own personal energy. Neither of us have farming backgrounds. We both moved here after spending probably the last 20 years of our lives living in various cities, whether they be Boston, Hartford, New York, and most recently Washington, D.C. I personally only moved up here about six months ago, and so it's just been a process of trying to adjust to life here on the farm, trying to build things out and get things started here on the farm. And so far it's been uh, pretty gosh darn awesome. I do most of the video making around here. Allison does a lot of stuff here as well that you probably won't see as much on camera. She's really camera shy, but you'll also see plenty of ducks and plenty of barn cats. Question two, why do you farm? So the reason we farm is because both Allison and I feel really strongly that sort of the conventional food system that we have here in America is broken and that there needs to be some sort of better model in place that both economically rewards the farmer, um, does good by the land, and then also does good by the consumer. So that's the main reason we farm. The other part of it all is that I personally find it crazy rewarding. So whether it's growing a tree or raising a duck or starting an entire farm business, I love the process of taking something small and watching it grow and flourish. Question number three, how did we decide on which products to grow? So I put a lot of energy and thought in determining which farm products we should be growing. Um, it was a combination of things. The first thing we focused on and the first things that we put into the ground, uh, which we did um, back in the uh, fall of 2017 was we planted about 600 tree crops and shrubs. The thinking is a lot of those perennial fruit and nut crops, uh, which included chestnuts, elderberries, hazelnuts, mulberries, butternuts, um, black locusts, apple trees, you know, those types of things, they take a number of years to get established. We knew we wanted to have perennial tree crops and we knew that was gonna take a long time. We wanted to go with ducks because the egg business is a relatively straightforward farming enterprise to get into. We went with ducks instead of chickens because nobody in this area is doing ducks in a significant way, but everybody's doing chickens. And so a dozen chicken eggs can go for like three or four dollars a dozen. Meanwhile, a half dozen uh, duck eggs can go for five or six bucks. Um, and so it was an economic decision. Plus, ducks are just, I find them to be the most amusing and incredible animal to work with. They're goofy, they're stupid, but they're also adorable and lovable and, um, you know, relatively low stress. The other thing that's important about sort of why we pick both the trees and the ducks as places to start was because I personally believe in this philosophy of it is better to be different than be better. One of the, the key elements of a successful business strategy is to differentiate yourself. How do you make yourself stand out from the competition? And I think one of the easiest ways to do that is offer a product that most of your competition isn't offering. And so that's why things like chestnuts or ducks um, become very distinctive and it allows us to try to stand out as we try to get established. Right now, we only have those two enterprises going here on the farm. I hope um, next year I'm gonna add a third one 
that I'll maybe talk about in a future video. But my plan has always been to, you know, build slowly. Because I don't have a farming background, because I don't have a lot of farming skills, I didn't want to try to jump into anything too quickly. And so, uh, you know, this is very much a, you know, learn one set of skills, get good at it, get a system down. And then once you get that established, you can move on to another system. I've seen so many wannabe farmers and homesteaders crash and fail because they do like everything all at once. They want a garden and they want uh, trees and they want pigs and they want ducks and they want sheep and they want cows and they, they, they get them all going all at once and they get burned out, they get frustrated, they make mistakes, they don't know what to do. And, and they fail. And, 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 and so, frankly, I didn't want to be in that sort of place. And so we've taken this approach of, of adding one enterprise at a time. Question quattro. Is the farm your primary source of income? Absolutely not. I continue to have a full-time off-farm job working in insurance. Allison has a part-time job working as a nurse and she's also actually in school. And the farm income that we have doesn't support us. The farm income right now doesn't even break even. I feel like we're on a good financial path, but we're not making money from it. We still need money um, from off-farm activities to support us. Uh, we don't come from wealthy families. We, are, we don't have trust funds of some sort magically sitting there. All we really have from a money standpoint is our, our, our personal savings combined with um, income from an off-farm job. I think that's an important thing to note because one of the things that I see a lot with uh, folks who are beginning farmers is they um, get really tangled up and twisted up in, in thinking about capital and you know they take out loans on equipment and they take out debt and it becomes this high pressure thing. Um, I mean, heck, you look through the history of, of the American farmer and debt has often been the, the cudgel that has just absolutely crushed them over and over and over again. So, so we've very much had this philosophy of starting our farm with zero debt um, and doing everything with cash that we have on hand. Um, that means that we're growing slowly. That means that I need to have an off-farm job, but I'm okay with that because the other dimension in all of this is I'm still growing my farming skills. Um, like I said earlier, I, I've never had a farming background. I grew up in the suburbs. I don't know what I'm doing. And so to try to start a business while you're learning on what you need to even do, um, that to me just seems like such a bad decision. And so, so that's something we're avoiding doing. Question number five, why are you making YouTube videos? I think question number five is a very reasonable question. You know, I think you should be asking any YouTube creator, why are you making YouTube videos? So the reason that we're making YouTube videos is this. As we try to build out our farm business and as we start to have farm products to sell, I think it's actually very important to have a brand in place, to have uh, people who know your story and have people who actually want to buy your products. I think it's a key part of any good business strategy. And so I figured people would find it interesting to watch us try to build this farm and then actually be able to participate and buy products from the farm. So that's the primary reason that we're doing these YouTube videos. The other reason that we're doing these YouTube videos is that I just love making videos. I have so much fun creating stuff. YouTube videos are great, they're quick, you don't overthink them, they allow you to have such a good direct connection with the people who watch your videos. So having this activity that can scratch a creative itch, um, you know, that to me is awesome. I can work on the farm and tell the story about the farm and have this creative outlet as well. And then this fringe benefit though that's come from all of this um, is just all the relationships and friendships that have come from people in the YouTube and homesteading communities out there who've connected with us, who've supported us, who we've made videos with. It's just awesome. And, and so I, you know, I'm really appreciative of all, all of that. And while that wasn't a reason why we started making uh, YouTube videos, it's been a huge reason why we've been consistently producing them um, a couple times a week over the last six months or so. So I know this video has just been a lot of me talking and blathering on. Hopefully you found it educational, but let's go watch some action. So why don't you either watch this one or this one and you'll get a better sense of what's going on here at the farm. And uh, again, please don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.